All right, what's up everyone? Uh, I'm Asgaz Champ. This is going to be episode one of my new playthrough for Total War Three Kingdoms. So this is going to be a vanilla campaign playing as Sun Jian. Uh, that's going to be the campaign that was available at launch. Now, I am probably going to do some other campaigns, um, maybe some of the DLC, some of the factions down the line, but that's that's all going to be for the future. For now, uh, I'm going to stick with the vanilla campaign. In terms of a release schedule, I'm looking to put out a video for this particular playthrough. Um, this let's play every Wednesday and Sunday. Now that is subject to change because my, my availability just changed week to week. I'm going to try to stick to that as a schedule though. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, if there's any changes, I will put updates out on there. So make sure you're following me there to, uh, to find out what's going on. So if this let's play something that interests you, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, with the bell so you get notifications as well. Uh, but without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, here we are then. So this is uh, Sun Jen. I'm just going to reel off some of the information about the character here. So his specialization gets uh, plus 25 campaign movement range when starting in friendly sea regions. So anywhere on the coast, I would imagine. And plus, plus six morale when attacking. Um, the faction specialization is heroism. So this decreases unit recruitment and upkeep costs, increases satisfaction of characters, and heroism is gained from inflicting more casualties than the enemy. Uh, Playstyle focus on expansion, uh, which is how I like to play, so that's fine. Got a few unique features here, so you can take uh, mercenary captain retinues, mercenary archers, mercenary infantry, mercenary cavalry, and uh, the building, unique building here is a mercenary outpost. A few noteworthy characters, but we'll go into more detail with them as and when they become available. So let's get into it. So just a quick one before we get into it, um, difficulty is going to be on hard, we've got a battle time limit of 60 minutes just in case there's any bugs or anything like that, we don't get stuck in a battle and have to reload, and also going to be playing on romance, so there we go, let's get into it. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Yet hope endures in those brave enough to resist. Sun Jian puts the future of his family before his own. Bravery is strength. Let tyrants fear the tiger. The fire rises, my lord, and Luo Yang crumbles. Dong Zhuo, I vow you will see justice by my hand. He has moved west with the young emperor in his charge. He will leverage all the remaining hand power against us. Let him try. I have never shied away from a fight. Such zeal is admirable, my lord, but may I caution patience if we are to have victory. Perhaps Yan Shu can be relied upon to aid us. He has qualms with his brother, but I will take any noble friend in these dire times. As Master Swan says, the expert must seek his victory. I cannot throw away my shot. The tiger of Jian Dong must howl once more, my lord, so that all of China may hear the call. So the first mission here, the objective is to, I believe, defeat this starting army. Total War Games, at the beginning of every campaign, you've always got a nice uh, battle to fight at the beginning, which is set up for you. And uh, the reward that we'll get for that is plus 30 military supplies and plus 5 morale, faction-wide, both of those faction-wide, actually. So I think this is one of the story events, so the Jade Seal. While moving through the land, something draws you to an old well. You peer over the edge and see a faint glint from the bottom. As you pull the rope up, a familiar shape rises out of the darkness. It is a beautiful seal of jade. It's the seal of the Emperor. So that's an ancillary that we've gained, which is the Imperial Jade Seal uh, for Sun Jian. That gives him plus 10 authority, plus 25 prestige. I believe that's sort of experience. Uh, plus 8 satisfaction, faction-wide. 
and plus three morale when defending, also faction wide. So that's good. It's got a few events here. I think these are some of the ones we just read through. Yes, it is. That's fine. Rouse the tiger of Jiangdong at your peril. So, in Three Kingdoms, you can sort of equip different weapons, armor, followers, and ancillaries, accessories, and so on to the characters. They also each have a bit of a skill tree. Now, we just gained the Jade Seal, so we're going to give that to Sun Jen here. And in terms of followers, we only have one at the moment. We'll leave it till the end of the turn because we may gain some more from fighting this battle. And just a quick overview of the map as to where we are now. Our territory is actually down here further to the south. Uh, Changsha. By the way, if I get any of the pronunciations wrong here, I do apologise. Um, I'm very likely to get some wrong. Um, but yeah, so Changsha town here is our only... Um, our only settlement that we have so far, but our army is up here in the north. So we're going to have to kind of fight our way down uh, back here. We can obviously take territory as we go, um, but we'll, we'll kind of see what that looks like as we go on. Now, in Three Kingdoms, like in Thrones of Britannia, uh, the settlements comprise um, of a region. Now, if you hold the whole region, I believe there's, there's some sort of bonus that you can get for doing that. Um, so it might be beneficial for us to come and take Changsha as a region. So I think there's four settlements here. There's the trade port, the town which we already have, the armor craftsman and the tea house. Each of those give you some sort of benefit. So we'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll look to take those. Now, without any further ado, let's get into this battle here. Valor illuminates the murkiest of paths. Yeah, I think we'll fight this one on the battlefield. Alright guys, so if you've seen any of my Let's Plays before of Total War, um, you'll know that I like to uh, spend a few minutes just setting the men up. It's not too important in this particular battle here, um, but I'll, I'll see you back here once I've set the men up. Alright guys, so here we go. I've put my archers in the front, my two heroes in front of them, my infantry line at the back, and my cavalry on the flank here. Let's start the battle. I believe, if I remember correctly, I have played this game very briefly before I put a few hours into a campaign, but this is going to be like the first proper playthrough that I uh, that I make. But yeah, I believe this first battle is kind of more just to introduce you to the new mechanics and so on. They have the dueling uh, mechanic in this one, especially when you're playing romance mode. Um, I'm sure we'll get to see one of those in a second. So you know what, I'll uh, forward it here and see you guys again when we get a bit closer. Alright then, so Huang Gai has been challenged by their general, I'm going to accept it. Let's uh, come in here and watch this one. Boom, took him off his horse, nice. So the jewels are pretty cool. They can get a little bit repetitive the more you watch them. Um, you need a moment to prepare. I can wait. The worst yeah, it's, part about this is that you really try. Yeah, they can be cool to watch though. Anyway, while they're having a little fight, I'm going to send the rest of the men in. At least the archers. Out. And I'll send the cavalry around as well, just for a bit of a flanking manoeuvre. And I can always move the infantry up too, just to defend the archers. Again, I think this in this first battle, the kind of whole point is to uh, see the dueling mechanic. I imagine if we kill the general, the morale of these guys will drop. Now they are shooting at my cavalry, which I would like them not to do. And we're now shooting back at them. I'm actually just going to charge my guys in, why not? Let's, let's just get it done. And let's also take some gen as well. We might take some unnecessary losses here, but I'd rather fight a more visually appealing battle this time. 
So Sunjen charges right in. They have taken him off his horse, but never mind. It's probably better for him actually. Show them your strength, friend. Let's get cavalry charged in as well. Look to your own troubles before mine. The enemy unit flees. What cowards! Take ready. I think they're pretty Never. much all running out, so let's keep an eye on this jewel that's going on. we mop up the rest of these men here. You've nearly got him. So his ability that my general here's got, oh well, he just threw a spear at him. Um, final rush, it's a passive buff, gives him plus 50 speed, plus 50 charge speed, and plus 50 melee charge bonus. So I think that just keeps on keeps on going. It's a passive buff. Oh, it's if his health is below fifty percent actually. Which it is at the moment, so. So yeah, he's actually taking a bit of a, a bit of a beating in this duel, but he is gonna win it. So they get that killing blow shortly. Meanwhile, I think the rest of the troops have mapped up their men. They're all running either way. This is probably an example in a battle where... Oh, there we go, he's killed him. We have killed an enemy general. Nice. Take heed, warriors. There we go. I think we have now won this one. No need to clean up the men afterwards. It's only a small force anyway, so... Yeah, let's claim the victory. Nice, so we got a little bit of money there. Sorry, I just skipped that by accident and we gained some heroism. Now, we've captured some troops. We can either ransom them, seize their supplies, um, or take them on as recruits for replenishment. Now, I don't think we really need the replenishment, so we'll we'll take the income. Cruelty is not my nature. Maintain momentum. So that's the mission that we were given, succeeded. So that gives us the taste of victory, which is, again, plus 30 to military supplies and plus five to morale, faction wide. Now we've been given another ish, uh, mission here. So this is to take Jangling Town, which is over here. Yep, so it's right next to us. We'll gain support from the people, which is plus five public order and plus 25 faction support. Could probably do that this turn as well. We'll have, have a look in a minute, uh, see what kind of garrison they have there. I believe the difference, again, between this and Thrones of Britannia, which I'm going to compare a lot to because that was my last Let's Play. Um, every settlement has a bit of a garrison this time, not just the region capitals. So that's something to be aware of. So we gained a glorious victory there. So for Sun Jian, he gets a bonus experience of plus 1000. So that's perfect. Now then, so... What kind of force is there here? There's uh, one character, two units of, I think they're halberds, I believe. Not sure how, there we go, we can check the garrison here. And then there's about four units in the garrison as well. Okay, I think we should be able to take those with our men. Might be a bit of a tougher battle, but we will see. I do have to be aware that there's an army up here in the north as well, who could come and attack me. But I think if we take this town and get our men situated inside it, they should leave us alone, I would imagine. No other events, I don't believe, other than what we just read. That's fine. You know what, we'll... Uh, might as well just go for it and fight this one. So we could uh, try and starve them out and so on. We have a very slight number advantage. Looks like a decisive victory. Um, I say we just go for it on the battlefield again. Alright then, so I'm going to take a quick look around, see where's the best place to set the men up. And then I will be back with you. It's worth noting actually as well, just before I do go, these arch towers are quite strong. Uh, they have a good range on them as well, but they can be captured by our troops, as you'll probably see when we start this battle. 
So anyway, I w the idea being I need to keep my troops and generals and whatnot away from as many of the towers as possible. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll set them in up and then see you back here once I've done that. Alright guys, so I've set up the troops, two infantry troops, um, in a group. Uh, one's going to go for this gate, one's going to go for this one. I'm going to keep the generals back until we've taken the towers, or until at least the towers are focused on the troops and so on. I believe those towers do quite a bit of damage to the uh, generals, so I need to watch out for that. I'm going to keep my cavalry at the back as well until they've got a clear run through. And the archers I'm going to send kind of down the middle, so that they can shoot wherever is uh, necessary, probably go for their skirmishes straight away. So I'll start the battle and see you once we get a bit closer and the fighting begins. Alright guys, so the towers and everything I've started shooting at is my archers are just about in range. I've just charged these guys straight down. Now I'm going to try and take out their archers first of all with mine. Can minimise their skirmishing potential, that helps us. I think once the fighting begins I will start moving the generals down as well. They will definitely help out in the fight. The archer towers though do a lot of damage, you can see quite a lot of dead men trailing the way there. So once we get into this semicircle here, then we can, we'll start sort of capturing the point. Unfortunately they're going to charge their men out and uh, impede us on that one. Let's keep them, my archers, shooting. And let's now also send the generals in as well. Now the cavalry, um, I don't want to send them off on their own because these towers will just make mincemeat of them. So I'm going to wait until we've captured one of the towers so we can bring them in through one of the gates here. Why are these guys running around like this? I have no idea. Just want them to shoot. That's fine, Mr. General, do your thing. So Sun Jin has a melee attack ability, which we'll try out now. Splash damage, I believe. Let's see. Is he going to do it? I'm not sure. I didn't see him do it. There we go. Did it when there was no one around. Nice of him. So we've made those guys run. We're going to attack their strategists here. They're usually weaker in melee, so... Um, yeah, we should, again, do good work against them. We've taken that tower as well. Looks like we've done pretty badly over on this side. Let's get the cavalry in on the left-hand gate. Even our general's uh, got himself hurt there as well. It's not good. Not good at all. Oh, we've won the battle anyway, so... I don't think we'll lose these units or anything. Um, this is a settlement battle, so I think we don't need to mop up their men or anything like that. So, yeah, let's just claim the victory. Have been vanquished. So that's it, we took the town, gained some money and some more heroism. We lost like almost well over half our men there, that's not too good. Um, we're going to occupy this place, we're not going to loot it. I think it has a big penalty here to the population. The settlement level also gets reduced as well, we don't want to do that, so let's just occupy. Firm, so we've now also completed that mission. Which gives us plus 5 public order and plus 25 faction support faction wide. So establishing order. There's no telling where insurgency hides now. Every warlord thinks themselves an emperor now. I reclaim this city in the name of that. So that's uh, more bonus experience for Sun Jin. So another mission issued and this is to construct or upgrade a building in Changsha Town. Uh, if you remember that's the settlement that we start with, and for that our reward will be your economy grows, and that's minus 20% to construction cost faction wide, and minus 1 to construction time faction wide, so that's good. We will do that now. So options are we either upgrade the town itself to a large town, or we can put a building in here. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just decide what it is I want to do, and then I'll be back with you. 
Alright, so I've had a quick look. I'm going to go for the government support building. It supports peasantry income and food production. So it gives us plus 25 food production. Sorry, plus 25% to food production and plus 10% to income from peasantry. Um, I believe Changsha is kind of set up to be a commerce town. When we start taking the other places, like a trade port gives us commerce income and so on. Um, but we don't have any buildings that will support that at the moment. We do have the mail post already, which gives us income from commerce. Um, so for now, yeah, I think we go for the land development. So, let's just double check these events. I think these have all been checked. Killed an enemy in battle. Gained some more ancillaries. That's fine. One thing we'll do very quickly before we continue. So, replenishment is going to take some time here. And we lost quite a lot of men in that battle. So these guys are going to have to sit back for a few turns at least. Which gives us a chance to sort of consolidate and potentially recruit some more men. So... I think I might do that, but I'm not sure if I can. Okay, so we can't do it until next turn. That's fine, we'll end the turn there and then see you at the start of the next turn. So just before I end the turn here, guys, actually, I've got the option to appoint a chancellor. I've had a quick look through and I think Cheng Pu is going to be the guy, man for the job. He'll gain some satisfaction from it. His income... Um, or his salary, should I say, goes up a little bit. But it should be fine. We'll confirm that. And yeah, we'll end the go there. Alright, so start off the next turn. Uh, Sun Jen and Cheng Pu are friends, apparently. So that's good. Some people of merit. I think these are people we can kind of, yeah, recruit if we want to. I don't think we need to at the moment. But worth keeping a note of who's there. So yeah, this army is going to have to replenish a little bit before I move them on. Now I can recruit. So, in terms of troops, we have some axemen. We have some cav and some archers. Spearmen would be quite nice, or halberdiers. They're going to cost me 120 per turn and 387 this turn. So I think we can afford to maybe take on two units of these guys. And they'll replenish along with the rest of the men. Just strengthens us a little bit, and I think that helps us out. So, oops, did I actually confirm that? Yes, I did. So yeah, we're going to keep them there. How many turns have we got? This construction is going to be done in one turn, and we'll then complete that mission. So just having had a quick look in uh, Jengling here, can actually upgrade the town, which might be a good idea. So what it's going to do is give us more prestige, uh, more population capacity and more income from commerce and peasantry. So I think we're going to upgrade that. We've got the money to do it. It's only going to be beneficial for us. So let's go for it and then we'll end the turn there. Just a short one this time. So mission success. Uh, we upgraded a building in uh, Changsha. So that gives us minus 20% construction costs faction wide and minus one construction time probably should have waited actually one turn for that to finish before uh, setting the large town upgrade there but it's fine we had the money and we've done it now anyway so that's okay so we've got another mission issued so this is to recruit and maintain a total of 14 units at the start of a new turn currently have 12 so we just need to recruit two more units for that and this will give us growing might which for three turns we will have a plus 50 bonus experience for units per season and plus 10% replenishment, so I think we'd do that straight away, to be honest. Recruit another two units. I don't think we need another general just yet. I think the two should be okay. Who do I want to recruit, though? Now, we could recruit some sword units. They've got good missile defense on account of having shields. Or more spearmen, which is always a good thing against enemy cavalry, and they do hold the line. Although these guys, these G militia, are pretty weak. Yeah, I think we go for a couple of swordsmen. They're still cheap units, but they're a little bit better than the spearmen, I think. Obviously not as good against mounted units, but um, we have a couple of spearmen here for that reason. So yeah, let's get two units of 
these guys. So that's the Sabre Militia. Okay. Now we still do need to just wait for replenishment. It looks like it's going to take some time, so looking like six turns for full replenishment. I don't think we need to necessarily need to wait that long. We can bring them out maybe next turn and just see if there's another army here at Badong Lumberyard. If not, we can take that and start moving our guys south. Ideally, I want to kind of take this whole commandery of Changsha uh, just to act as a bit of a base, even if we have to kind of move our armies away from these two settlements here. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Again, not much else to do this particular turn, so we'll end the go there actually quickly before I do. Okay, that's just letting us know that some buildings have completed. Mission success and mission issue, that's fine. Okay, we'll end the turn there. Alright, so that's another mission of success. It's going to give us plus 10% replenishment, which is something we needed right now. And also a bit more experience for our troops. So that's a, another mission issued. This one, the objective is to hold three settlements. We currently have two. If we do so, we gain some heroism for three turns. We may be able to do that soon. Now, in between turns, I did notice an army of the... I think it's the Han Empire. Yep. Han Empire army. They stopped around here. Probably hiding in the trees. That's why I can't see them, I would imagine. Um, but I saw them move in. So I don't necessarily want to move my troops out of this settlement this turn. Although, if I remember correctly, yeah, they have to sort of go around this river crossing first of all. They can't just cross the river anywhere unless they're on a boat on the river. So, I wonder if it's worth me moving them out, at least over here. Although, I could probably benefit from the extra unit replenishment from having them in the town for one more turn. And then we can kind of see what, what they do. They might be sending the troops down here to defend. If so, makes our life a bit more difficult in attacking that particular settlement, but also takes another one of their armies off the map if I win. So that will be good for us. Now we've got the option to upgrade some more... Uh, upgrade, sorry, Changsha Town to a large town. Doesn't give us any more garrison. My understanding actually is that they would give us walls. I don't think it has walls at the moment. It's only got towers level one. Anyway, I think best bet is that we upgrade it. We've got the money to do so. Let's do it. Why not? We're not spending the money on anything else right now. Okay, we'll end the go there again. Actually, before we do, we have a reform choice pending. So, I really like this tech tree, it looks very nice. Um, I have watched some of the Let's Plays for Sun Jin, and Changsha is a, a commerce town, so ideally we want to build on the commerce income that we're going to get initially. Let's have a look at what we'll do that for us. Alright, so mercantile regulation would give us plus 15% income from commerce. Once we take Changsha, that's going to definitely benefit us, so we'll go for that one. We get reforms every five turns, I believe it is. It does tell you. Yeah, five turns. Okay then, so... Yeah, we'll end the turn there, and then I think we'll move these troops out on the next turn. So we've been offered some dipl uh, diplomatic proposal from Liu Biao. Just had a look at it, it's not really favourable for us. Now he is much stronger than us. However, he wants us to cooperate with him, which would mean we end up giving him 20% of a lot of our income. So from family estates, taxation and trade, I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to reject it. A rude rejection. So, as I expected, uh, the army of the Han Empire, they were waiting in ambush, and they moved away, so that's why we've discovered it. And they've settled themselves down here in Badong. Now, they have six units there, Badong itself, which one's this? The Lumberyard has a garrison of four units, so that gives them a total of ten. 
compared to our 12. So that's going to be quite difficult actually to take. So it might be worth, um, I mean, I still have some leftover income. Might be worth recruiting some more troops actually, and maybe getting another general and some more men. Something more equipped to deal with a siege. And then start moving them over. Let's have a look. So in Three Kingdom, it's really important to make sure the commanders and generals and whatnot that you recruit for the same army, that they all get along with each other. So it's it's this little green tick here tells you sort of who they get along with or not. So when we're recruiting a new general, if you've got a green tick here, that means they will get on with each other. They have, uh, it says their similarities in opinion, allow relationships to flourish harmoniously and they can sort of develop relationships over time. So Chengpu might not be a bad idea. We do already have a Sentinel in Sunjian. Uh, Lu Su might not have been a bad idea, however, he doesn't like Sunjian, so that's not going to work. Lady Wu is Sunjian's wife, I believe. So she will get on with them both. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just deciding, and then I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so I'm going to have a look through. Um, I don't really like any of these guys for this particular army. Now, I did have a look at my court. And we have a strategist here, Lufan. He would cost a thousand for us to recruit. The only thing is I'm not quite sure how to check if he would fit in with the army without actually recruiting him first. I can see his traits, but I'm not sure how to check if they're sort of good against other traits or not. So I think this turn I'll recruit him. It cost me a thousand. I then wouldn't be able to actually recruit any troops after that. But then next turn we might be able to do so. Uh, so yeah, I'll recruit him this time. I think now we can check sort of how he gets on with everyone else. Um, I'll, I'll have to check it sort of off camera here, but um, with that, I think we'll end the turn. All right then, so our men are pretty much replenished now, which is good. I think one more turn and they'll be fully replenished. Let's have a look at potentially recruiting Lufan, yes, he does get on with them, so that's fine. And he brings with him two units of archers. Only cost me 540 and 140 upkeep per turn. So let's do that. May wisdom flow. And I wonder if we can get any siege. Yeah, so we can actually get siege equipment with him as well. Although it might be worth... Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to wait at least one more turn to get one of these. But I think it's probably worth getting them before we go in for the siege. Just means we can weaken weaken them somewhat before heading into attack. So with that, I'm not sure if I can recruit if I'm not in the settlement. But let's risk it. If I can't get the siege equipment, which actually I can. So that's fine. Next turn we'll do that. Again, not much going on at the moment. With it being early on in the game, but we're going to end the turn there. Alright then, so we've got a little bit of a decision to make here. So Yuan Shu, he demands the seal. So he's issued a statement that I have no right to the Imperial Seal and must surrender it to him, the rightful owner. So this guy thinks he's the Emperor, or should be the Emperor. So I can choose, either give it to him, I lose that ancillary, but I gain diplomatic relations with Yuan Shu. Or I keep the seal, um, which to be honest I'm more inclined to do. But diplomatic relations drop quite drastically with Yan Shu. Now, currently, we have a decreasing relationship and it's at 38, so he'll pretty much hate me if I keep the seal and maybe cause a war. But screw it, let's do it. So you merely laughed at Yuan Shu's arrogant demand and told him that if he wanted the seal, he'd have to take it from me. Yeah, that spells disaster. My right, boy. so this turn then, let's recruit um, one of these. So we've got a multiple bolt crossbow, or a trebuchet. Hmm. So the trebuchet is going to be good against walls, walled settlements buildings, that kind of thing. The multiple bolt crossbow is going to be better for just taking out infantry. I 
again, I can't remember if you can tell if these are walled or not. Now, I don't believe maybe the lumberyards and so on can be walled. I think only the uh, small, well, the, the region capitals can be. So it might be smart for me to go for the crossbow on this occasion. So it's going to take a few turns to replenish, probably longer than it'll take for us to get there. But it might still kind of come in handy a little bit. Okay, we'll end the turn there again. Let's just quickly check Changsha, there's no upgrades we can do, so yeah, we'll we'll end the turn again, and I think we'll fight this big battle uh, before the end of the episode. We've got some ancillaries gained again. Woozy, which gives instinct satisfaction and military supplies. People, more people of merit. And Changsha has upgraded to a large town, so that's fine. Now, just before we end the turn here, actually, one thing I did forget to do was to check uh, the equipment for Han Guy here, and obviously Lu Fan now as well. So there are different weapons we can give him at the moment. He's got a spear, which has 236 melee damage. Armor piercing as well. Do we have anything that might be better? So that axe, great axe, is quite good. It's got a lot of armor piercing damage. It does give him minus three to expertise, but plus nine to resolve. The spear gives currently gives him plus three to instinct, but he's already got quite good instinct, so I don't think that's too much of an issue. Yeah, I think we're giving the axe. In terms of mounts, he's probably got the best one you can have. Followers, we have the builder. It gives plus two expertise and minus. One to construction time. And as for accessories, we probably want to up this guy's instinct as much as possible. Don't want to give him a bow. So this gives plus six to instinct satisfaction and plus five to military supplies in his own army. So yeah, we'll, we'll go with this. And now that he's sorted, we also have Lufan as well. I think we leave him with the weapon he's got. Don't have any better armor to give him. No better horses. That doesn't really do him any favors. Now, ideally we want to push this guy up to past 100 cunning. I think it gives him some sort of bonus. Um, I'll again have to check on that. So this would give plus six cunning, plus six to satisfaction, plus four to reserves in the administ administered commandery. So he's not administering a, a commandery, but that's fine. I think that works out better for him still. Yep, let's equip him that one. Nearly pushed him over the edge. Okay. Alright, we'll end the turn there. Hopefully next turn then we can get into a battle here. Alright, so a bit of a decision to make again. Fraternal versus Loyal. It's a bit of a strange one this one, so I can't choose Fraternal because I don't have um, the loyal trait, so my options really are to choose uh, loyalty or to ignore it altogether. Um, now, by choosing loyalty, my relationship deep, uh, deep sorry relationship deepens greatly between Sunjian and Chengpu. And because we don't have the fraternal trait, sorry, I can choose that because I do have the loyal trait. I can't choose that one, so we'll we'll go for that. That's fine. So there's some events with characters going on. So Lusu's not very happy. So he's got low satisfaction. There's things you can do to kind of bring up their satisfaction, such as give them accessories and, and that kind of thing. What could we give him? Ideally something to up his cunning, since that's his main skill, but don't have anything at the moment. Maybe we'll give him a uh, resolve and I'll also give him plus four satisfaction as well. Followers don't do that, so that's fine. Still going to be a bit of an issue with regards to his satisfaction, but with it should be okay. Alright then, I think we're going for this battle here. Into battle. 
Now, I've got a couple of options. I can either just kind of go in and fight this one. I can't fight a night battle to remove the reinforcements. I think to do so, your army must be commanded by a strategist with a night battle skill locked here, so we don't have that. Um, the other option is to starve them out. Now, if we starve them out, they might attack us. Nah, let's, let's just fight the battle. So I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Alright then, so let's have a quick look over the battlefield here. So, a few entrances. There's no walls, which is good. Now, if they're defending, I'm assuming they're going to pop their troops on the front lines here. Um, by the gate, sorry. So, that'll give my artillery that I just bought sort of a chance to do some damage to them. Hopefully they can stay out of range of their towers while they do that. Yeah, alright, I'll uh, set the troops up and then be back with you in a second. Alright guys, so plan being, um, attack this gate here and attack this gate here. I've sent sort of my stronger units for this one because they're going to have um, none of the artillery support and so on and no general with them. I've kept my cavalry here as well, I'm actually going to move them up into the trees at the start of the fight, keep them hidden if I can, I'm not sure if that works but I'll, I'll pop them in there and see. And then once that gate's taken, we can move them in for flanking maneuvers and so on. Archers at the back here, I'll just keep uh, peppering them with arrows as we go. On this side, uh, I've got my sort of weaker axe unit and my spearmen. They'll attack this gate along with Sun Jun. Um There's these archers as well who are not particularly replenished yet. I'm still debating in my mind whether I should send them in, um, simply because if I do, they could get routed very easily. It's not ideal. And then the crossbow is over here, there's only one of them looks like vision's a bit impaired by this hill here so I don't really want to move it forward into the range of the uh, the towers here I wonder if there's a better place I can put it actually no, I think we just leave it where it is it's, it'll have to do what it can do there's only one of them anyway so I'm not expecting miracles from it so I'll start the battle and then I'll be back with you once we get a bit closer to the fight. Alright, so the crossbow here, I'm going to just have it shoot. In fact, let's shoot the guys in the back actually. Only because the line of sight will be a little bit better. I'm sending the other troops up. I did send these archers in, I thought, you know what, if they, if they get killed, they get killed. Okay, these guys have been spotted. So let's move them back. Don't want to get the cav killed just yet. These archers, let's have them shooting here. Actually, they have quite a big archer presence here. Might be a better move for me to take their archers. They do outnumber us actually quite a lot in terms of skirmishes. Now with these troops here, let's, let's just have them charge in. I want to put as many bodies in there as we can. I do wish sometimes that the archers would listen to you, but they don't, so I'm going to have to move them manually forward. China will revel in your death. Let's have these you guys charging now as well. Creature. And with the artillery... Actually, the artillery might be able to shoot those archers over there, which would be good. Our comrade is under attack. Okay, we're winning the engagement here at this gate. They are raining arrows down on me. Um, it's not ideal, but here's what it is. Let's shoot their archers with my archers. These archers aren't doing much, but let's try to get them on their archers again. They're actually getting shot by this tower over here. That's not good. Can I get it out of... Get them out of the range of that? I'm not sure. Don't think so. I'm gonna have to leave them there. Okay, some enemies running. That's good. Looks like we're doing all right here as well. They didn't have very many melee units, I don't think, unless they're keeping them at the back, maybe. Okay, general is now dead as well. Sun Jen is still over here. Okay, fine. These guys are doing all right. Let's move these missile troops in. Let's take these guys, charge down their archers here, hit them in the back, that will be perfect, you guys don't do that. 
You stay where you are. And you guys also get charging down cavalry. Cavalry can come in and go for their archers as well. Yeah, I think we've got this one in the bag. So with these guys here, let's just charge them down to the main capture point here, including Sun Jin as well. Ah, there we go, we've won it anyway. Didn't take too many casualties that time, so much better performance than the last battle. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys back on the campaign map. Hey! Today we humbled our foes. Alright, nice amount of income there and heroism too. We're going to occupy this one as well. I will be firm, but fair. And that completes another, another mission for us, so heroism increases. That's good. And another mission issued, and this is to send any character on assignment. I think these missions are kind of here to, a bit of a tutorial, just guide you through the new features in the game. Um, but yeah, sending a character on assignment, uh, we'll, we'll go through that in the next episode. But yeah, that is going to be it for this one. So, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like. If you've got any tips and tricks for me, uh, leave a comment. I do appreciate any feedback I can get. I've only played this game a little bit before, so this is probably one of the Total War games I'm least experienced with, so that would be great for any advice. And uh, if you want to see more of this content as well, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. So, I'll see you guys on the next one.